Good morning, everyone. Would you please join us in singing 313, Gather Your People. Remember in this mass, we follow Mike, the bishop, and Gordon Martin, and all our benefactors and friends. May they be resting in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We believe that God created us to love us and to be with him so that we could share his love with one another as one family, as brothers and sisters. He always gives us chances, opportunities to return to him when we are not able to love one another as we should, as we, as we must. So for all the times that we've not been able to be family, when we have neglected our God, let us ask for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my through my fault. Therefore, I ask God for my reservation, all the anguish and pain from you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me into an area of God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
Take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it, and crying out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I see how stiff-necked this people is, continued the Lord to Moses. Let me alone then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with such great power and with so strong a hand. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and all this land that I promised. I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage, the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord.
have mercy on me, O oh God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin cleanse me. I will rise and go to my father. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. I will rise and go to my father, to my father. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. My sacrifice, O oh God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humble, O oh God, you will not spurn. I will rise and go to my father. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am grateful to him who has strengthened me, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he considered me trustworthy in appointing me to the ministry. I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and arrogant, but I have been mercifully treated because I acted out of ignorance in my belief. Indeed, the grace of our Lord has been abundant, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of these, I am the foremost. But for that reason, I was mercifully treated, so that in me, as the foremost, Christ Jesus might display all his patience as an example for those who would come to believe in him for everlasting life. To the King of Ages, incorruptible, invisible, the only God, honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord.
God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus, but the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them he addressed this parable. What man among you having a hundred sheep and losing one of them would not leave the 99 in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it. And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy. And upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance? Or what woman having 10 coins and losing one would not light a lamp and sweep the house searching carefully until she finds it? And when she does find it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, rejoice with me because I have found the coin that I lost. In just the same way, I tell you, there will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Then he said, A man had two sons, and the younger said, son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country, where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens, who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pods of which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, How many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat? But here am I, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. And he said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, Quickly, bring the finest robes and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fatted calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field, and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked him what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fatted calf, because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry. And when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. 
he said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fattened calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Well, today's readings invite us to believe in a loving and patient and merciful forgiving God. And that is because God created us to love us and to be in communion with him so that we could share his love with one another. The good news that Jesus preached was that God created us to be his family and that he is our loving and forgiving God who wants to save everyone through Jesus. And he's always in search of the lost and the straight children as Jesus explains in the three parables of today's gospel. He is always in search for those who have distant themselves. Today's sacred scripture readings point to the fact that God is patient. He's patient with all of us, with all his rebellious children, giving them time to reflect on their lives and their mistakes. And he hopes that they will convert from their mistakes and sins. And the gospel of today from St. Luke demonstrates his festive joy at their return. God is happy when we return to him. In today's first reading taken from the book of Exodus, Moses was imploring a forgiving God to have mercy on the people, though they were sinful people. And he felt that they have abandoned him and turned to idolatry instead, creating idols and worshiping them. And despite the fact that these people have neglected God, Moses still out of love reminded God of his promises to Abraham, to Isaac and Jacob and begged him to show mercy to his unfaithful people. And the responsorial psalm of today is the song of a sinful person returning to seek God's mercy. We just heard, have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness, in the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. A clean heart create for me, O God, the psalmist claims today before the Lord. And in today's second reading, St. Paul tells Timothy that although he, Paul, had been the greatest of sinners as he diligently persecuted the first Christians with a passion. God, in his love, 
has shown great mercy towards him. And St. Paul wants us to recognize the fact that even though God forgave him and had compassion of him, we can just imagine how much more he would have for all of us. God loves us despite ourselves. His love is more powerful than anything bad, any sin that we can commit in this world. The gospel passage of St. Luke today presents us the essence of the good news about the mercy of our forgiving Father. We just heard proclaimed by our deacon Greg what is essentially a single parable, the parable of the lost and found with three parable illustrations, the story of the lost sheep, the story of the lost coin, and the major story of the lost son. These three stories remind us that we have a God who welcomes sinners and forgives their sins whenever they return to him with genuine repentance and contrition and resolution. With that teaching, Jesus shows us what a true conversion is and how a true conversion looks like and the characteristics of a true conversion. A true conversion of heart and mind is when we recognize our wrongs and repent for them, learn from them and commit to change, knowing that God out of love gave us new opportunities to improve our lives in and through his mercy. The Hebrew term for repentance, teshuvah, means a return to God by a person who has already experienced God's goodness and compassion. That's why our Catholic Church, through the teachings that we preach day in and day out, remind us that we have to feel loved and forgiven first. It's only when we feel loved and forgiven by our Lord and reconciled by Him, we will be able to serve his mission so that other people can see the power of God in our lives already. Based on today's gospel message, I invite you this morning to consider two things, two spiritual practices that are very basic, that could strengthen our relationship with our God and make us truly feel loved day in and day out. That can make us feel reconciled in him day in and day out. That should make a difference in our lives. Two practices that many mystics have practiced and have told us that does make a difference in our lives. First, the practice of ongoing reconciliation, that we intentionally try to reconcile with God. It will be of great help for our spiritual life and our relationship with our God to develop the practice of examining our consciences before we go to bed every night and confess to God our sins and failures of the day asking his pardon and forgiveness. Then we can finish with a simple Our Father to give us a sense of our belonging to God's loving family. A very simple practice that makes a very big difference in our spiritual lives. That will give us peace and grace and a deeper rest. 
we can also resolve to receive the sacrament of reconciliation if we have fallen into serious sins. That's why our sacramental church offers opportunities to come to him through the sacrament of reconciliation. If we do these things, we will be able to live a peaceful life as forgiving prodigal sons and daughters, getting daily reconciled with God, our merciful and forgiving Father. And second, we can ask God for the courage and the goodwill to extend God's forgiveness to others. For you see, God created us to love us, and he loves us so that we may not, may not be or may become selfish. He loves us so that we can find a way to love other people. He's generous to us so that we can be generous with other people. So let us realize the truth that our brothers and sisters deserve and expect from us the same compassion, kindness, and forgiveness we receive from our merciful God. There is no way that we can say that we feel loved and forgiven by God and we are not able to share the same with other people. That will be selfish. That will not be a reflection of the work of God in our personal lives. And as forgiving prodigals, we must become forgiving people ourselves for Jesus taught us to pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. As we continue this morning with this celebration of the Holy Mass, let us pray also for God's divine mercy on each one of us who have fallen away from God's grace. And let us open our eyes to see in our ears to hear that Jesus is welcoming us back home, not tomorrow, but today, because you and I belong to Jesus' home. So as we continue this celebration, as we continue this Eucharist, let us heed the message of today and let us ask the Lord to really help us feel his love and compassion and above all to help us feel that indeed we are his family, glue in his love. Let us now profess the faith of our Catholic Church. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all the invisible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, God from God. To God and to God, be God and not made, consubstantial with the Father. To Him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, He was crucified on the Pontius Pilate, He suffered death and was buried, and rose again. I believe. 
come. Amen. To the God who seeks out what is lost and rejoices over its return, we offer our prayers this morning for the church in a world so much in need. For God's people, shepherds and faithful, to be ministers of reconciliation to all who are alienated within or from the church, assuring them a joyful welcome, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families that have been torn apart and for those parents who long for a distant child to return, that they may be comforted in their loss, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a speedy end to the trumpets of war, wherever they are sounding, and to the madness of terrorism, and for the peace to fall soon and very soon upon a war-weary planet, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world community to rush to the aid of countries and communities overwhelmed by massive flooding and to other lands touched by nature's fury and the destructive effects of climate change, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For parish religious catechists and volunteers, as they ready themselves for their so important ministry, may they grow in knowing and be blessed in teaching our faith and the Church's heritage of compassion, reconciliation, and social justice and for the young people entrusted to them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For forgiveness and reconciliation, to bind together parents and the children separated by disagreement and misunderstanding, and for all grandparents who rejoice in the love of their families, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those gathered here today, that we may sincerely seek the Lord in our lives and attempt to continue to grow nearer to God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's consolation and peace for all mourning loved ones, especially loved ones lost to the terror on that 9-11 day 21 years ago, and all our beloved dead to be gathered home to the everlasting embrace of God's love, we pray. Father in heaven, whose love and forgiveness are boundless, listen to the prayer of your people. Remain with us as our refuge, our strength, and our hope. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who is Lord forever and ever. Please join us in our offertory hymn, number 461, Be Still and Know That I Am God. Be still.
The table of our Lord is ready. Pray that this our offering may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings that what each has offered uh, to the honor of your name eh, may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts Amen. and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and reconciliation and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us, and through, and though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation, and as they turn back to you, in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we exalt, exalt the power of your love in proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you. We join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts as without end we acclaim. beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Lord, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Holy Spirit that they may become the body and the blood of your beloved Son Jesus Christ in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just and handed himself over to death and is not disdain to be nailed 
for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched before heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, brought the bread and gave it to his disciples uh, saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples uh, saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, and do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles us to you, the human race. So kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you who unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph Tyson, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wounds of corruption and made fully into the new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him, with him, and in him, O oh God, Almighty oh Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is church forever and ever.
now at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of our Lord be with you. And your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold uh, the Lamb of God. Behold uh, him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are welcome to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm now guilty. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life.
Our communion song is number 440, Only a Shadow.
How precious is your mercy, O God. The children seek shelter in the shadow of your wings. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in each one of us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you sit down just for a moment, please? We have a... Go ahead. Go. Uh, a reminder that we are registering new altar servers for our masses. If your child is interested in becoming an altar server and is in the fourth grade or older and has received First Holy Communion, they are eligible. Registration forms are available in the parish office. Instructional training will begin soon. Are you interested in becoming Catholic? Are you Catholic but need of a sacrament? This New Year's session for RCIA, the Rite of Christian Initiations for Adults, will begin Tuesday, September 20th at 7 p.m. in the parish library. Please register in the parish office, or for more information, you can contact Deacon Jean Ockengay. Also, there will be coffee hour after mass with gluten-free products available. Thank you. We are right now in the process of finalizing our planning for our confirmation program for this year. As you already heard, um, the whole faith formation program is going to begin uh, the first week of October. And we are very pleased that uh, the preparations are going well. We continue asking you for prayers so that we may do a good job in passing on the Catholic faith and the values of our uh, church to the new generations. Today, I am pleased to present to you Monica Valle, this young girl he, lady here who is our new coordinator for our uh, middle school confirmation program this year. I'm gonna ask her to introduce herself to you. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I am going to be the new middle school coordinator for students that are in sixth through eighth grade. I am Monica Valle. I am a cradle Catholic from California where I was raised and got my bachelor's in psychology. And I am very excited to be able to be here and form a very strong youth group for our children, for our teenagers, so they find a place of belonging here in the church and are excited to be here when they are. And for that, I would need your guys' help to be the best role models for them to strengthen their faith, to be able to come close to God. And I invite you guys to be volunteers. If you are willing to, I'll be in the back, um, outside or heading out the church at the table. If you have any questions, I'm here to serve you. Our first reunion will be on the 25th of September, where we meet with the parents and students and get to talk about what the year might look like. And if you haven't signed up your students for First Communion or for confirmation, right now is the time. And I'll be out there with the forms and any questions if you guys have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Next weekend is Catechetical Sunday here in the United States of America, where we are asked by our bishops to pray for all the catechists, to ask the Holy Spirit to empower them so that they may not only receive the grace of, and the talents to teach, but also that they may be transformed in the process of teaching our children. I ask you for your prayers for all of them during, during this week, so that next weekend also may we as a community bless for all our catechists. Please stand. Father, Father. 
we have a special blessing today. Yeah, we have uh, a final exclamation point on our celebration today. We have a special celebration and a special blessing. Um, today, we're celebrating the anniversary, the 50th anniversary of Paul and Jeanette O'Donnell's wedding, marriage, and we'd like to give them a special blessing, and you can join us in that. In the tender plan of his providence, God, our almighty Father, has given married love its faithfulness and its fruitfulness, a special significance in the history of salvation. Let us therefore call upon him, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Father, all holy, you have made marriage the great symbol of Christ's love for your church. Bestow on these your servants, Paul and Jeanette, the fullness of your love. For this we pray. For all holy, Father all holy, the faithful one, you ask for and respond to fidelity to your covenant. Fill with your blessing your servants who are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. For this we pray. In your providence, you have ordained that all genuinely human experiences should become ways of leading the faithful to share in the mystery of Christ. Grant to your servants, Paul and Jeanette, serenity in good times and bad, and the will to stay close to Christ and to live for him alone. For this we pray. Lord God and Creator, we bless and praise you. We praise your name. In the beginning you made man and woman so that they might enter a communion of life and love. You likewise bless the union of Paul and Jeanette so that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. Look with kindness on them today. Amid the joys and struggles of their life, you have preserved the union between them. Renew their marriage covenant. Increase their love in them and strengthen their bond of peace so that, surrounded by their children, they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit always fill your hearts with joy. The Lord be with you. May our loving God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Our sending forth song is number 612, Give Thanks to the Lord. does wondrous deeds, who masters the wind and the raging sea, whose love is forever, whose love is forever, whose love is forevermore. Give thank to the God who has blessed our land, who guards every step with the mighty hand whose love is forever whose love is forever whose love is forevermore oh bless the lord for every gift that comes to grace our way and praise the god of faithfulness who comes to light our day give thanks God of the summer rain, who spreads out the hills and the golden plain, whose love is forever, whose love is forever, whose love is forevermore. Give thanks to the Lord who is merciful, whose kindness Love bountiful, whose love is forever. 